Hey gang, Xaman here for another episode. I know I said we were going to be reviewing an SW9 in the channel update. It is actually an SW7, so sorry for that uh, mistake. This is an unboxing episode today, so we're going to break this box open, see what the contents are, and then evaluate the box, and then review the locomotive through my normal testing procedures. Stick around, it's going to be a great time. Okay, everyone, this is the Walther's Mainline EMD SW7. This is part of the Phase 2. We'll go that into that in a little bit. Again, uh, I picked Pennsylvania because I'm a Penzi modeler. So let's go get this thing unboxed. As you can see, the box is styrofoam. And it has a plastic cover. And it looks like there's a little plastic cover that is shielding the locomotive. Okay, yeah, we got a plastic uh, cover here that is now unexposed and showing our locomotive number 9377. So again, this locomotive is in a styrofoam box with a little plastic cover. So it looks like you need to gently, very gently, pull this bad boy out so you don't mess up the details. And once this is out of the box, it will never go back into the box as far as I'm concerned because this is not the greatest container. So now that we've unboxed the scale model of the EMD SW9 Switcher locomotive by Walthers, let's look into its details. This is their mainline series, a step below the Proto series. But however, they are still very good running even though they're not the most detailed models. They provide a great value to the modeler at entry level pricing. This model is available in both DC and DCC and comes with ESU Loke Sound 5, which is a fantastic sounding decoder. Walters offers seven different road names and an undecorated version of this locomotive. My example is in Pennsylvania livery. These MSRP for $149.98 for DC and $209.98 for ESU Sound and can be found on sale online anywhere from $130 to the MSRP price. The Electromotive Division SW7 Switcher was built from 1949 to 1951, with 489 of these locomotives produced. Pennsylvania Railroad was the largest buyer with 48 purchased, making this a must-have for Penzi modelers. The switcher was powered by the famous EMD 567A engine, with 12 cylinders producing 1200 horsepower. The Phase 1 body features an arched roof cab windows, while the Phase 2 features square windows in the cab. This model is the Phase 2. And it is also very well, very well painted and detailed. This model comes with railroad specific details in each different road name. All have dual conical stacks, large front radiator grills, straight hood six louvered doors, factory installed grab irons, footboards, and a powerful five pole motor with helical gears and all wheel electrical pickup. The model measures 44 scale feet long and possesses a heavy die cast frame and plastic body and weighs in at 8.1 ounces. This is a small locomotive so that 8 ounces aids in the pulling power, power of this small switcher. And you will see that in the test portion of this video. Unlike more expensive models, this entry level Walther's engine has metal couplers. I wish all manufacturers would use metal couplers nowadays. With the appearance fe and features complete, let's get this on the test track and put the switcher through its paces.
Wow, this is glacially slow. I actually have locomotive and speed step two so we can speed up this process. Half a mile an hour. Here are my final thoughts on the Walther's mainline EMD SW7. This locomotive joins other Walther's mainline engines that I have that are, or, that are all exceptional value to the modeler. The pros of this model are the smooth, powerful motor, dynamite ESU Loke Sound 5 DCC sound decoder, the pulling power, and overall detail given the low price. My only complaints are the packaging and the performance at st speed step 1 where the locomotive didn't move. However, this is offset by the pros. I'll be using this model to do switching duties of local freight delivery and train consisting. Let me leave you with a little switching action on the layout. 